if watching me fail for two hours and then taking that two hours and condensing it into a 20 minute nifty video about my own failure sounds good to you, then boy do I have some good news. Make me feel better about my personal downfalls and failures by maybe giving us a like and if you're new here, why not subscribe? We put out five new videos every week, all focused on advanced level Photoshop, though maybe not so much today. Now let's take a look at what we have here. Hey gang, you're tuned into Photoshop with Abby and Dean and today we'll be chatting about those times when art goes wrong and things really don't go to plan. So get comfy, grab a coffee and enjoy the show. Hey Abby, how's it going today? Uh, horrible. It's going horrible. Okay, that doesn't Ask sound great. Tell, tell me why today is a horrible day. <laughs> because I wasted several hours of my life doing a speed edit to something that will never be opened again and <laughs> never turn into anything. <laughs> Okay, so what you're telling me is that not every single thing that you do is perfect right out the gate. I'm going to go ahead and say about 90% of what I do ends up in a whip folder that never gets opened again. And I feel like this is a very relatable thing, so I'm, I'm willing to uh, show the, <laughs> the uh, less than pretty side. So everyone okay, so for the can audience, feel better. What's the benefits of going through this process of looking at a piece that you weren't happy with and that you won't be adding to your portfolio what why why is this valuable to the guys watching today um well personally i, I hope to shame myself and being better but otherwise it is incredibly important to realize i think especially because we're a tutorial channel to understand that tutorial content is specifically made to be um a teaching tool and so I edit out all imperfections. I edit out any ums. I edit out any time I moved the mouse incorrectly um, where this was unsalvageable and would otherwise have gone unseen, right? Um, okay, I, uh, I actually agree because a lot of tutorial content, a lot of Photoshop content online is hyper polished, hyper edited, yeah, flawless. And as, as we've said many times in our videos before, that is not a true reflection of the artistic process. Not mine. You know, no. A warts and all <laughs> aspect to creating art. It's, it's highly subjective, you know? Oh, yeah, incredib incredibly. And, and like I said, every tutorial piece I've made, I've had, I do an initial put together, and then I do a more refined one, and then I do the third and final one, which I screencast. So by the time I'm doing that tutorial, I've done it at least three different times for the specific image done in that tutorial, and usually it's an effect I've done several times beforehand. Um, yep. Where here I got a little cocky and was like, "I'm uh, so mermaids um, are something I never get right the first time because I always say I'm not a digital painter, digital painter, and I'll usually say that as I'm digitally painting, right?" But this is a perfect example of me failing um, because I'm trying to digitally paint when I am not a digitally uh, digital painter. Um, okay, um, are you open to a little bit of critique? Please. So, me being a non-digital painter, um, I I kind of botch my way through everything using stock images. Did you consider? Uh, getting a photo of an eel that has the configuration that you like using a warp tool moving the photo of the eel in water and then painting over the top of the eel to get that um get that kind of fishy effect for the lower body yeah i am steadfast in that mermaid pale uh, tails need to be painted which um of course there's good uh you know stock photo made mermaid tails but in my experience like i remember back in the day what they used to always say is take a fish cut it in half and then like paste the two two pieces together and that made a mermaid's tail i'm like that makes nothing that looks like a tail or a fish it looks like a, a half fish weird quasi uh, monster um but yeah what you you've know. gone for here is a 
a kind of it, it does have an ill yes. vibe to it that, very that kind serpentine of, um, sea snake kind of thing you could have taken an existing sea snake in the kind of curvature that you needed and then use that as a reference for the lighting and the curvature and the bends. Yeah, I was hoping. So speaking of the lighting, um, that's where um, I really picked a photo that was out of my league in terms of because I was trying to match her lighting. Um, and I thought it would be easier because she has a very specific type of lighting, right? But, it's high um, key, isn't it? It's high key lighting. Yeah, exactly. In her original I'm not a photographer, I, I, I recall high key being used for those stark whites and stark darks. Well, in her specific photo, she's in a pool of water, and it's um, there's a lot there's a lot of uh, light, not and it's reflecting down, and so it's reflecting up as well from the bottom of the pool. Um, I, I actually I'll put in a. Um, I'll put in the original uh, stock photo just so you can see. Yes, it out, yeah. yeah, so everyone can see. And that made lighting the scene really hard as well because I had no idea where to put the original bounce lighting. Because if she's supposed to be in the ocean, where would the source of lighting be? And then the tail had to follow the same lighting. And it's like, I was just out of my depth the whole time. And anatomy Beautiful comes punch. into it. It's a, it's a huge thing. But I've done several mermaids, right? Um, yep. It's just not something. They always take me several hours of trial and error before I hit a groove with them. Um, and I was silly. Watching to this. Think. Now I want to have a go at a mermaid. Oh, yeah. No, they're great. And I, I have a few older tutorials. And I hope to do a um, much more longer in depth one one day. But every time I do a mermaid, I make myself um, push it further, right? My original mermaids were very easy to do, and you were just painting um, a tube in a loop. And I had like a lot of tricks to it, but I always kind of like, like try and get, I want to get to the point where I have a <clears throat> photorealistic tail, um, not to go What's off on a mermaid What's interesting what you had tangent. going on there, you, you added um, some bevel and emboss. We don't really see that in action these much, that much these days. Um, what's the brush that you're using for creating the scale effects? Uh, yeah, it's a free brush, actually. Um, I'll link it down below. Uh, it's my favorite scale brush by far. I don't use it to its full benefit here. Um, you, I have other mermaids, if you want to check out my portfolio, that um, shows this brush off much, much sure better. you have some mermaids um, in your collection that are very good at spas. <laughs> yes, I just want everyone to know that I can do a mermaid. This was but just not my day. Can please, a little bit on what you did with the bevel and boss on top of that scale brush it's layer. just to get the initial uh, sheen to the scales and all of this none of the tail was even remotely close to being done i just kind of got more and more frustrated as i went on and moved on and never came back um but the um so these are just the template for the future scales essentially and they give you a nice um base highlight that you can work with later on but so, these so would need... the bevel and emboss function that you put in place wasn't the payoff it no. was the foundation for the next step absolutely it's like the yeah it's like the first of like 10 steps <laughs> that just I, never I think <laughs> some of the textures and effects that you've yeah. got on this are, are really quite successful i do the think you're being a nice. little bit too self-critical with this one it's because it's, i knew it going in it, from the very so when we started this um w right when we started the speed edit um it was already partially done and that's because when that's when i started recording but i tried to give myself a foundation and just t so where i knew i was like okay it's smooth sailing from here that's what i kind of want to feel like and the whole time I was like, this isn't going to work. This isn't going to work. This tail doesn't make sense. I don't know how to get it to make sense. I had references up and I was like, why can't I just get it to make sense? Like those tails make sense. It's... <laughs> but if I were to be critical with this one, Abby, Please. I would say the only thing that really stands out to me is the mechanics and the physics of the tail movement. Yeah, it makes no it makes no sense. It makes um, no sense. But the texture work, the the base lighting that you've done, I, I can't really see anything majorly heinous with the lighting. And I will tell you if I did. You know, there's no point in lying on these things. Um, but the textures are nice. The lighting, I think, works. I think the only thing holding this piece back, really, is the actual shape of the tail itself. And for anyone watching right now, I'd be really interested interested to hear what your thoughts are, uh, what you think successful, what you think's not so successful, because this 
It was a really valuable learning experience for all of us, for Abby, for me, for you guys watching. Yeah, and just to know that, like, so I straight up gave up on this, right? And it was it was meant yep. for something. I, you know, I kind of needed to get it done. Um, and I don't know. I think it's a good skill to have to know when to just call, give it a rest. <laughs> to just say this is this is done. Though it's not to say, like I said, I I kind of like how the the stomach was coming along. It was having this really nice sheen. Um, that I was kind of liking. Um, if I ever revisit this, the whole tale will be scrapped, right? But the rest of it could potentially be saved. Um, and I know the concept right now isn't coming across, but it's it's based on an older image. My very first yep. mermaid, in fact, where it was just called Foreign Object. And it was a mermaid finding a severed foot and not knowing what it was because you know, mermaids don't have feet. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> I was aware of that this was not going well. This um, is when the frustration kicked in. Oh, from the very beginning, it kicked in. But that was when I knew, I was like, I, this isn't going to end up. And I thought doing the foot, I thought doing the foot would kind of. So from here on out, you're going to see me jump from things to things and do a lot of random stuff. Because what I try and do when I, when I know things aren't going well is I need another kind of like, um, like dust of wind in my sails, right? To get me excited, where I'm like, this is working, this is working, keep just going for it. And it just never came back. Nothing ended up looking good. Uh, before you continue with Sparza, mm -hmm. I am really loving that depth of field effect going on with the blood, where the where the blood's going, rising and expanding outwards. Um, it's dissipating as it would in real life. Can you just give us a quick heads up on how you achieved that? Because oh, yeah. if anything... You, you have been successful in teaching me a new trick today. So just give us a heads up on that. Uh, good old uh, iris blur and field blur. Um, Excellent. It's, it's the only... It's I use Gaussian blur every once in a while. You notice it a lot, but field blur yep. is where it's at. Yeah. Yeah, I've started using the iris blur a I, lot. Yep. Um, I you was do a using lot of good stuff with collection. it. I was using Nick Collection plugin, and it kept crashing Photoshop. And then Redwan told me, you do know that they have that built into Photoshop. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm such a heathen. Um, you really are. You, tell me you might not have it because of your version. No, nah, but oh, I, I do have it. I've, I've used it on my last few pieces. Oh, but okay. yeah, seeing it used in that context with the blood is really clever. Oh, um, you can do crazy stuff with it. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, that's cool. I, I do like to replicate analog photography from time to time. But for creating depth, especially in that situation there, really really cool Absolutely. Um, you've got color dodge there flow 11 and you are using your Cintiq your, oh, your yeah. trusted Cintiq for doing this digital painting Absolutely. and light shaping going on with some manual vignetting and some manual backlighting I believe would you say that's an accurate description of what's going on yeah I'm just trying to get general I thought maybe you know I thought maybe if I could get the base lighting down it would help me like visualize what is happening but um <laughs> it didn't obviously but yeah I always I always paint in my shadows uh, you could I, I, what I may do is have it as the, um, the preview image you could have the the female the floating female and the severed foot floating as, as a really powerful standalone piece or the thumbnail itself i thought about you'll, you'll see at the end i i straight up give up but I, yeah i thought about um just pushing the uh scales on her um face and like bringing up that nice texture all over her whole body but i was done i was spent i was so disappointed i was so <laughs> this is just it can be saved it can be saved by a creative <laughs> drop i think when you see me just just desperately jumping back and forth and especially if you see me messing with selective color and then not using that selective color that's when you know i'm desperate because i'm like maybe changing right, the color pretty much <laughs> spinning your wheels yep i'm just like anything, anything and please. easy bubbles for anyone uh, that wants to know you take bubbles on a black background you change it to screen yeah and then okay. if you need how do you how do you push the blacks if you need to push the blacks what's your chosen method I personally usually use curves, but I'll also do brightness contrast sometimes if I'm lazy. Nope. Uh, never levels? No, no, I don't know. Levels just seems like a like a like a worse curves. <laughs> Sorry to anyone oh, who uses levels. It is 
It is. I, I know I use levels for everything. It is a worse curve. Oh, I didn't even think about but that. We're friends. Me and levels are friends. We have been friends for many years. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely a, a curves fan girl. I was going to say a curves snob, but... Also... also. <laughs> <laughs> it's what the fancy people use. I'm, I'm gonna say the only thing I like about this whole image is how that bubble wraps around the um, heel of the foot. I think that looks really nice. Like the... that. Can you explain to me why you flipped the cam canvas horizontally? Oh yeah, so just to get uh, kind of a refresher of um, uh, the perspective of things. So if you're ever stuck or just periodically as you're doing something, you should always flip your canvas. Um, to refresh your brain, essentially, and you'll it, it'll point out imperfections. I, I see, yeah. I see the other guys doing it all the time. It's another yes. trick that I'm missing, basically. Yeah, super important. I'm because a dinosaur in comparison to you guys. I have a, a, a bit of a video about it, not that specifically, but I mention it in depth about how it just helps um help you see you know things you so wouldn't have seen before. So far behind you guys. Esparza, it's because um, I've spent three quarters of my career dicking around with the pencil. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Refusing to upgrade Photoshop and get a pen tablet. I, I still haven't upgraded, but um, <laughs> yeah, the peer pressure is going to get the best of me very oh, soon. Absolutely. Bully you into it. And um, so you've you kind of tweaked things around. You've, yeah. you've changed the orientation of this piece. You've I, rotated it. Grasping at straw, anything. I, I, yep. So I probably Just, paused it, but so another thing I like to do when you know I'm desperate is I'll start flipping the canvas upside down because sometimes when I look at something upside down, I'll see the potential in it. I'm like, okay, something is happening here and I'll flip it right side up. Trick actually. Do you have um, uh, a technique or a method for quickly? So when you did the flip canvas horizontally, what method did you use for that? Uh, I have it on a hot key on my little Cintiq remote, but it's also I have it keyed or hot keyed to uh, F8 on my keyboard. So I just what is F8. that that hot key reference into? Um, as a shortcut. Yeah, but what is it a shortcut of? Is it image rotate canvas or yes. is it um, yeah, rotate? Yeah, I think yeah, I think it's image flip canvas left yep. right. Yeah, yeah, I think it's image flip canvas. So we're going to be doing a dedicated uh, lesson very soon where you're going to be teaching me the dark arts of the Cintiq tablet. So I'm really looking forward to that one. Mm -hmm. Finally, it's to drag you into the 21st century. Finally, and I may even update my Photoshop as well. <laughs> Please do it as I'm watching so I can just... I yep, I'm gonna, I'm gonna join the 21st century. So we're nearing the end of this one now. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for sharing your insights with us today, Abby. That was a brave move for you. So what I'll do is I'll hand it over Failures. to you to close this one out. Yeah, so like if you like, subscribe if you really like, and let me know what you'd like to see next. Or just say hey down in the comments. I'm Abby Esparza with photomanipulation.com. See you next time.